What I was going to say, welcome and to uh, Lerawa on a beautiful day, end of October, end of uh, so most of these five artists, end of their stay. Uh, one has been here f oh, six weeks, some less, some leave tomorrow, some stay longer. Uh, I, I consider these people to be very brave to have crossed the oceans to come and work on their you know, what is most important to them uh, in this setting. And they have uh, made a beautiful family here as well as they work and um, share different things. And now they are going to share it with the world a little bit, talk about their stay. It won't be too long and I hope uh, you will enjoy it with us. Uh, so they will take turns. There's the musician, there's the three visual artists and the poets who will be getting a little bit of this and that. How are you all doing? <laughs> so my name is Raka. I am from Iceland. Um, I studied in New York for the first two years. I was in upstate New York. Um, and I was learning the foundation of art. I was doing a portraiture, landscape, drawing, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a really beautiful scenery and it was really good for me because uh, it was a small campus. Uh, Pratt Institute has a really small uh, campus in Eureka, New York. Uh, and it was really good for an Icelander to be able to uh, start somewhere small. And then I moved to Brooklyn. Um, and I started to make more iceberg kind of paintings. Uh, this was my thesis work that I did in 2019. Um, uh, this is Glacier Lagoon. It's currently still on display at Pratt. Uh, I was supposed to pick it up this year, but uh, because of COVID I couldn't. So hopefully next year. This one is also from my thesis work. Um, I really enjoy starting with the background color and I really love this uh, fluorescent orange and then adding on top of that um, with oil paint, sometimes acrylic, but uh, oil is my favorite. Um, so uh, sometimes I'm inspired by impressionist paintings like Monk. So this one is a little bit like that. Uh, also Glacier Lagoon. Uh, but then this year I started uh, enjoying painting plants more. Uh, I lived in Brooklyn when COVID started and I had a little uh, rooftop garden. Um, and then I started getting back to some figure painting uh, on the left side. Uh, it's a man uh, during COVID, it was the day before lockdown started. I was on a bus and he had like the mask and gloves and everything. And on the right side is my old supervisor who was also uh, modeling for like a, a just at a bar for drawers and artists. Uh, and then I started painting a lot of small paintings because uh, I was moving around. I had to go to Massachusetts because of COVID and I had to carry it in my small bag. So these are like tiny pa paintings of just the family. And, uh. But during Gullkistan, I got back into a little bit of landscape. I went to Vík, so the church on the left is from Vík. And then on the right side is the beautiful view here um, at, of Hekla. Um, I feel really relaxed and good here. I just moved back to Iceland in end of September and it was of course really stressful to be in a third wave, but we're re really lucky here to be able to just relax, work on our art, be like with all these amazing artists. And I also try to hike every day. Um, I went to a Katla ice cave and uh, this painting is kind of inspired by that. And uh, I didn't put all the paintings that I have been doing here in my presentation, but we have it uh, on display here. Um, so what's next for me and actually Kio as well, we're going to Nes artist residency in Skagastrund, which is gonna be a little bit colder and also a tiny village. I'm also uh, studying curating at the University of Iceland and I have uh, two shows next year, Hannes and Holt uh, and in Laugalegur and hopefully COVID will not cancel that. Um, if you want to see anything more, um, you can check my Instagram or my web page. Thank you.
they put up the work here on the wall. No, what we've been working on here, besides, I know other things as well. Oh, Laka, thank you for sharing. So, um, we are moving straight now to Kyo. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kyo Kayamoto. I'm an illustrator from Japan, but uh, I grew up moving around to places such as Brazil, Chile, Japan, and a few places in the US. And I graduated from Pratt Institute in New York one year and a half ago. And I started freelancing, making illustration projects and animations. Recently, I'm doing these postcard projects for holidays and other occasions. And I grew up loving children's books, both stories and the pictures. So those have a huge influence on me, my work. Okay, let me show you guys my recent work. So uh, this piece is exhibited online currently, presented by Doncaster Art Fair. The theme is celebrating our strengths in our diversity. So if you look at this piece, you could take one side, like on the left side and put it on the right side and the piece can continue. So it becomes like a circle for society. And diverse people, we're all still connected and help, we help each other in society. That's my message. And the piece is currently exhibited in London in a, a paper dress vintage small store. It's presented by SKT Spaces. And the theme is Art is Why I Wake Up in the Morning. My painting is inspired by Gustav Klimt. And this is a portrait of my mother, but I wanted to show how art, all formal art, including fashion and interior design and all the type of art we see around us affect our life and it inspires us. And that's my message. This is a typography project I did. Uh, title is Insomniac. So it's like an irony. That more you try to sleep, you can't sleep. So the uh, letters are made out of bed and this girl is trying to sleep, but she's having a hard time. And these are two GIF animations that I made for celebrating birthday, happy birthday GIFs. From here are the works that I worked on when I was this, this month in at Gokesten. These are some statues I found in Europe and pigeons are on it and they look like the human statue and the pigeons are interacting. And I thought that was funny. And this is another holiday postcard series for Halloween. And I'm usually good at spot illustration where there's a drawing and the background is white and the drawing is just in this white space, but I'm trying to integrate the background and foreground and have more uh, intricate design. So I'm practicing on that. This one is a witch's hat, is a house of her little pets. And a girl dressing up as jellyfish costume. Well, uh, this is a, a, up until here, most of my work are done with pen and watercolor. And here I started doing acrylic paint on mini canvas. This is five by five inch or 10 centimeter, very small canvas, but a uh, pumpkin touch. And these are actually for Easter, but I took my old design and painted by acrylic painting to practice. Since I'm planning on making uh, more paintings of, with Icelandic scenery, since I'm here and I'm enjoying a lot of nature here, I would like to paint more of Icelandic scenery with my uh, stories. 
Thank you. And so next is Jennifer. Hi, Hi. I'm Jennifer. Um, I don't have any front teeth because I was in the middle of dental work when I was um, when COVID hit, so that was hard for me. And I applied to the residency in March I, because my son was who just joined the call. Um, was going to college and I felt like I need something to help me transition with my son's thing and um, then COVID hit and I, w I served for a guy that I and I got a call one day and all of them said I I got in. Um, I usually don't go riding residencies, but Iceland is my favorite country. Um, so I really, really want to spend significant time here. And it's been a really, really happy time for me. In, the waves been an endlessly bad year, just one bad thing after another. So, um, also today's my son's 18th birthday, but we're not going to sing happy birthday because that makes the dog bark for some reason. You can try. <laughs> Larry for Duncan. Um, and this is the poem that we wrote for Nick named Robert Duncan. And it's after a long um, consideration, I figured out that this is actually my favorite Larry Agnew poem. He wrote 3,000 poems. His life, he said, he made to outdo him a little bit, and he managed to do that. Um, just because I forget to purge different ways, the fish go monotonous, the sudden hoax of the trees in the glorious summer. You don't realize how much turn you get at 21. But when you look back, when for a summer continues 70 seasons, this one has been so various. Was the spring hot? Every habit to read nothing. You've ever done, you have older. The fish can't bother screaming, flat like a hook, the working pain, jaws, jaws like crying ahead, bodies. You'll always go to sleep more times than you wake. Um, that last one, um, I think, is one of the most profound lines ever written. You always go to sleep more times than you Um So I read what's called um, series poems, which uh, means um, it is, um, uh, here's what it looks like. It's, it's a poem that is not one, it's, it's, it's a poem in part, basically. And I'll read a couple of those. Um, this is from the field guide to flying, and I'm going to start with my son's um, favorite poem. 
And most of this book is about my son. Um, flight six. Fishermen chatter endlessly. Perhaps this is why Jesus had so much to say. The world is calm. On the ocean, ocean birds make boats of their bodies. Flight seven. In the desert, birds appear larger. Gray doves reflect the dust all around. Gideon's sin on the fence, trying to get a piece of the action, unaware of their awkward immensity. The mother cowers in the corner, her wing momentarily broken. The boy's going to drink none or get milk. Next thing you know, we need Rikers. He dreams of his mother's bird-like wrist, her blonde hands. Oh, how she is tied to this earth. This is a field guide, um, um, part of the field guide to domesticity, and this poem, um, the segment poems, does something that I've never seen anyone else do in a poem where it stops in the middle of the poem and continues the poem with the next segment of the poem. Um, uh, so far, I'm the only one who's done this. I don't know if it works or not. Um, the field guide to domesticity. Domesticity one. The sea isn't, isn't a home. My hand becomes an error. My body is a list upon which daintiness is written. On Monday, Thursday, the car must be on the right. On Tuesday and Friday, it must move to the left. Wednesday is our day of rest. In the evening, all the hipsters pour into the bars. From the walls of a taxi, this city always glows. The message too. So splendidly, one can barely keep one's eyes on the meter. How do I wrap the word domestic around the tongue of a um, central landscape? Domestic, 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 On Sunday, the earth rotates slower. The crystal world, the pointy world, we move like freight trains. The husband sits in the famous spring chair. What are you doing? Attempting to solve the equation of this life. This is the two guys in sound. Sound two. The bird begins at 3 a.m. just when I begin to sing. The child makes kick tiny whale calls from the sea of his bed. The noisy bird reaches her ass, reminded wing into darkness. Her loss is immeasurable. According to the piercing field guide to Easter birds, there are no nightingales in this city. Sound three. With only the sky for reference, it becomes that which defines the world. 
Clogs gather and collect over the silent fortress. They change colors, threatening in their fabric of intent. One strings are map that must be charted and followed. Sound four. What is the mean? A proper replacement for this immense body of water, the sound of an empty handed bell echo off the graffiti built pool. Fake birds burn in fake trees. The pop stars mean to tell us Kiko were not in Oregon anymore. <laughs> Oh, how to hold the art of my dying across the page, and how to tell the birds to be quiet, and the sky, and this sky, building this building, all around thrusting the nest of the sea upward. Okay, um, I'm getting busy for this one. Um, body rewritten in the form of an empty piece. A shadow crosses the street, a shadow walks the beach. It moves laboriously, blanketed by a series of lights. The movement at once distorted and beautiful. <clears throat> Aren't we all damaged human forms? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is a um, um, this is the I own by my very, very close friend, Susan B. And a great artist, Susan B, who's married to the, um, the great poet, Charles Bernstein. And um, this is my other book, which I actually did all the drugs for. It's, it's a book. Um, it's a book about a character named Jagger. Um, but this is a little bit, I just think, uh, with the, this is a little bit less lyrical. So I just had to, I'm really kind of writing home because um, I have to say, New York, um, we lived in Brooklyn with our permanent residence and um, uh, going to this college there was pretty um, traumatic. It was not fun at all. So <laughs> reading the folk made um sort of love my home again. Which um, still a little bit mad at. <laughs> I'm still a little bit mad at Brooklyn, but I'll deal with it. Last one is Cyril yes. sitting right here. This one, and she will. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm Cyril Dasson. Uh, I am a French artist. Uh, I make a um, conceptual project on um, installation. If you want to see, uh, uh, okay, it's uh, all my projects. It's a conceptual project, and um, it's an installation of photography. It's uh, all the time in the volume. It's. Uh, uh, for me, it's so important when the, there is a, a real sun, uh, 
for the society, actuality, and uh, for the dystopian world, you know, for the future, too, for the politics. And uh, I really enjoy maybe the city, a uh, lot of uh, projects with uh, habitat uh, and house. And uh, I play in the uh, city and uh, I destroy it after. So it's like a um, uh, metaphoric dystopian uh, war for explain the politics. And um, um, <laughs> I don't know, for, uh, in, 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 in Iceland, for me, it's important to make a work with um, the territory, the culture, the landscape. And uh, for example, uh, I have a project with, um, uh, with uh, for example, with fake Northern Light. I can read a little text about this. Um, so in the European collective in Conscious, uh, it is believed that uh, it is a, a guaranteed uh, people will see the Northern Light when visited Iceland. Over where being lucky enough to see this surreal phenomenon is far from obvious. This project absurdly, absurdly staged a series of artificial light to uh, retrace a surreal and almost psychedelic atmosphere with false aurora, aurora borealis indoor in the projection in the projection uh, exhibition space. So I, I, I like to take uh, reality uh, of the territory, the culture of the territory, and the actuality and um, uh, I take this for my project. So the env environment, it's so important, the actuality too. And um, uh, for me, it's important when there is a politic sense in the, in the work. So um, sometimes it's dystopian, sometimes ironic, absurdity is so important too. Um, uh, I, in Iceland, uh, uh, in Gulkistan, I use to the black hole because for me it's important to uh, take the materials of this uh, country. Uh, it's so important for economic uh, uh, sense too. Uh, the wool for the black sheep, for example. <laughs> I like the I like to the um, the symbolic of black sheep here. It's so, it's so amazing for me. So it's like uh, um, the metaphoric uh, sense of black sheep. I like this. So I have um, work too for runic, uh, the rune, uh, the symbol of, um, because it's so famous in Iceland. It's, uh, for, for me, it's, um, it's interesting to, to work with this. And uh, I have uh, other work too. It's uh, the the work with life jacket. Uh, so I make uh, the boat with two life jackets orange. So I put this in the lake, and uh, it, it, it was really really great for me because in Gulkistan there is a, a big lake. And the, amazing landscape so it's, it's really, really great really for taking a picture of installation you know and uh, uh, i have a little text about this too so uh, there are two orange life vests who meet uh, they form a boat floating on the waves lost in the immensity of dark water this res uh, rescue boat float lost in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it is a boat of hope, of survival, a sheer, a lighthouse uh, in the dark, 
it can be a safety raft if it's symbol so uh, symbolism can give hope to choose you get lost in trouble water uh, it's a reference to the migration you know it's so important now in the world so for me it's like uh, um, actuality reference so it's it's a little bit for ironic mm -hmm. and political so you know <laughs> um, i'm very interested about this mm -hmm. so, i have my house wall here <laughs> oh, well, house. House, I yeah. uh, make a house with wool, uh, it's like, um, it's like a wool sheet, you know, it's a sensitive um, project, it's like a survival project, it's, uh, okay, I can, I can read the text about this. Uh, the hab uh, house wool. The habitat is a structure of protection of life. There is uh, only structural made of metal, scold, and industri industrial, uh, retracing uh, prim uh, primary and obligatory need for survival. This structure, bold, solid, and fragile, uh, take the form of a stereotypical habitat in Iceland, uh, the, where this structure is adorned with forms soft and the protective fluffy wool, the chips wool so present in Icelandic culture. Like a post protective film, it envelops it itself in safety and yet it's so vast in appearance. It seems in unfinished and yet sufficient to survive. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, I can, it, it was funny project, it's Northern Light uh, fake, because when I am in France, the people say to the time, oh, you're going to, you go to, to Iceland so you can see Northern Light. So, I have a photo of this. I make uh, a fake northern light like this. <laughs> it, it's with artificial light. It's uh, for make uh, um, for make uh, uh, so fake and artificial northern light ambiance. <laughs> it's a uh, for absurdity project. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I have different, uh, I have different photos. I feel like it's not finished, but I have the, uh, I have learned to lighting uh, with the black wood, and uh, I want to make a black flag with this. Uh, but it's not finished because nothing is so long. But uh, I'm happy to learn. It's uh, interesting uh, materials. So I can continue in France, sure, and uh, I can take a photo after for continue uh, this residence in France. <laughs> I am <laughs> <It's, it's, laughs> uh, So it's wool, black wool, like this, and uh, I have this. <laughs> Uh, it's so long for me. It's a uh, very good. Um, it, it's uh, it's difficult. It's not difficult, but uh, it's so addictive to to uh, <laughs> to make. And uh, for me, it was interesting. But I I chose the origin of uh, of lighting, and it's. Uh, uh, I, I read it so in ancestral and uh, the Viking makes this too and uh, it's like protection for the cold the weather and it's so it, for me it's important it's not in the whole country it's so Islamic so I want to use this material so yes okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay, good. Sure. Other question? Thank you. Yes, that's so. I know everyone's through, and so we, I mean, we are in no hurry. If you have any questions, <laughs> I know the Master of Technology would uh, give you voice. Uh, it was so good to have so many guests for this, like, experiment. Great, thank you. And we have recorded it too. So thank you guys. guys. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.